Hi Vanderbilt, this is a quick tutorial to teach you how to use the Vigilon ACC version 6 client tool for playing back video content that's been sent to you. Now when you receive a video from a Vigilon client, you'll get what is known as our Vigilon ACC player file and you'll also get an export with a date associated with your export or name associated with the file that you've been sent. First, we'll just double click the file, <coughs> excuse me, the program. And this is your Avigilon Windows uh, for ACC Player 6. And we'll talk about the tools in a minute. But what I'm going to do is simulate going to open that file, finding the file on our desktop, and then just opening what has been sent to us for review. So if you'll notice right away, I'm just going to walk you around the screen and give you a little bit of an idea of each of the tools that's available. From the left-hand side, this is where we're going to find the camera names that's been sent to you. You'll notice we have four camera names in a list. We have the same four camera names at the bottom of the list. And then the corresponding name for the cameras in each one of the four quadrants on this 4x4 grid. We have a few different camera types, and we'll talk about each of those as we go through the system. But at the very top, we have the open file, which is where we're going to find our file to play and review. A search tool, which we'll do in a later video, which allows you to search through the content of what you've seen. And then the main tools you'll use inside of the player are the first four tools. And as I hover over them, you'll see that's a cursor tool, a zoom in, a zoom out tool, and then a pan tool. The pan tool is probably my favorite of all. And then the last is a, or the next to the last, is a change layout. If we click on that, we can change our 4x4 grid to 9x9. Nine nine. You'll notice it, as I select those, it manipulates my screen to change up the views a little bit. And the last uh, hover tool you'll see is a full screen. If I just want to maximize the view I'm, I'm watching, I can see the full screen. So we'll take the very first camera with a date and a time stamp that you've been sent. It's called Command Center. So if I take a look at this camera, uh, you'll notice there's a couple of buttons inside the view. There is a take a still shot. So if I wanted to take, I found what I'm looking for in the video and I want to take a still image of that, a JPEG image, I could click that to do that. I could hit maximize, which would fill up the screen of that video that I'm looking for. And we'll do that for the moment. And then a search tool that we'll come back to later. But in this screen, this is a 2 megapixel camera. And I'm going to show you a little bit about each of the tools. The highlighter, or the, the cursor tool, is what we've used so far to select items. So we're going to zoom in a little bit. I'm just going to take and draw a box around the front and video wall and zoom in. So as I zoom in, I draw a box, or if I just click the zoom arrow, it will zoom in to the area of the screen that I'm clicking the plus sign. Obviously, you would think the same on zooming out. Clicking as many times as I click, it will zoom out of that same space. My favorite tool is probably the pan tool. So if I'm in a fixed or a movable screen, you'll see the little hand is showing up now. If I have a roller mouse, I can scroll into the view with my mouse and click the left-hand mouse button to grab the screen and move my view around inside of that screen. Much like a pan tilt zoom, I still have the full video, but I'm able to zoom in on area of content that I'm looking for. So viewing video is as simple as that. M manipulating the screen, you have those four tools to do that. Now at the bottom, we'll notice that I've got the command center highlighted. The command center is the name of the tool, uh, name of the camera. And then at the bottom, I have command center. So I am going to double click using the cursor tool and that's going to back me out of full screen. So now I'm back to my four way screen and all four of my cameras show at the bottom on the sides and in my quadrants. So the next important part is down here is our timeline Thursday, January 10th, 19, 2019. And then you'll see uh, 1 40 PM is typically what we're seeing in our video. So we've got maybe 30 seconds, 40 seconds of video. If I click inside of this timeline, you'll notice it draws a red line. And as I click and hold and move that red line, you'll notice that video is changing. So I'm scrolling through the video at any pace I wish. So I'm back, I'm going backwards, now I'm going forwards. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about things that you'll see here. This 
bottom left hand corner you'll notice I now have a red box around this person this is an analytic camera telling me that it's detected human pattern or human motion so when we see that we draw a red box around that person uh, so if I play the video now you'll notice several red boxes pop up as people move inside of this particular field of view I'm going to stop the video by hitting the pause button um, and again, I'm going to go back to scrubbing that video. You'll notice that where I see red in association with the line, that means that there is motion or an event inside of that red area the camera has detected something. So if I have a space for command center where it says white, it's not, nothing is really changing in that field of view. It's only when I see red that something has changed. And you'll notice under the command center, Nobody's moving around in that office space until it hits that red spot. I've got a gentleman walking from, and I'll maximize here. I've got a gentleman walking into the room, and that's why the red motion has been detected. Now he's going to leave the room, and it's going to go dark. So two guys in the back, kind of not detected, comes into the room. I've got another gentleman, another red line at the bottom. So this will help you as you're looking for your video. What's important to you, you'll be looking for events in the bottom in the red and the timeline association as I move back and forward. Now how do I change you know how much time is in that field of view if I hover my mouse over that timeline and scroll it up or down then I will begin to get video that uh, or I'll see a larger timeline. In this case the video is from uh, 146 in the afternoon to 149 so I can scrub down as detailed and as deep as I want, minute by minute or second by second, and see video content a little bit differently. Uh, you'll notice that I have a round ball here. That is one of our fisheye cameras. You may occasionally get a view that's a fisheye, and I'm going to maximize that view real quick and just explain what you're seeing here. If I take my, um, my pan tilt zoom, or my pan hand and I click inside this image and then begin to scroll in that fisheye becomes a 360 camera that I can continue to scroll in and then move around the room as if I were in the room seeing the video and content so be aware if you see a round ball in your video in your export you'll know that that's a pan tilt or a fisheye camera that you can step into the scene and move around and detect more information now I'm going to minimize that screen and go to a 9x9 nine nine where I have pulled up that same pan tilt zoom in three separate screens. I'll pull up another one just so you see what I'm talking about. So once I've pulled those up, um, if I zoom out of those, you'll notice they all look like the little balls we saw earlier. So you can zoom into the front glass wall here. You can zoom into the same camera in a different field of view um, for the video wall. And that's all just using the simple pan, pan tool that's located at the top screen highlighted. Well, this is a short, quick tutorial. We hope you've learned a little bit about how to maneuver inside of the uh, Vigilant ACC Player tool. Uh, we'll send additional tools that gets a little bit deeper in what you can do. Thanks.